So this is what our fields look like this morning. Down there is the bottom of what we call the barn field, which is their summer turnout. And then you can see all the girls and Hida in the 14 acre field there, which has puddles of water in it. But on the whole, it drains really well down there, so they're not stood in water. But as you can see, as I come across to the left, the road at the bottom of the hill is flooded, as is the track that goes down to what we call the long field, which is over behind those trees there. Alongside the road, that's the orchard, and that's probably about as bad as it ever gets. So there's a beck just running along that hedge line on the left and to the front of that field, and obviously the water has come over the top of that. But as long as we get no rain within the next 48 hours, it's likely that we'll all drain away quite well. The other thing I wanted to show you is this front field where the boys broke into here at the weekend. Now because we're going to have to keep the boys separate from the girls and Hida, we're going to have to let them into this field which I don't generally use in the winter because this part at the front where you can see the electric posts and that red jacket gets very very boggy but our fabulous work experience helper Ewan is down over there you can see him just walking across there fencing off this really boggy area so that we can let the boys who are down the bottom there alongside the gate that they broke through come through into here for the rest of the winter as well the other challenge that comes with that is I'm going to need to bring the tractor into this field and put another ring feeder in here because there's obviously not enough grass to last them for winter. So we're currently looking at the options to get a whole load of hardcore put down in this boggy area here and to the entrance to the 14 acre. So that's something that Tamara has been working on. I've been doing a little bit on that today because that will make a significant difference to the safety of us and the horses at feed time. I'm now at the bottom of the orchard and for those who might be interested in this, I thought I'd show you a little bit of a close up of what goes on down here. So we've got this beck that runs alongside our nine acre field. And it goes to the right of the stone wall there and it comes along and it runs under the road and across into the beck that runs along the bottom of our 14 acre field. When we get rain like this it becomes a bit of a river down this road and because the becks are so high, even if we had better drainage through this field, it couldn't run away any quicker. So here you can see all the water in the orchard is actually coming through the stone wall. And the problem with that is it begins to bow the stone wall and the pressure of it will eventually make this wall fall down. I'm hoping that's not going to be the case today. So as you can see, it's pretty deep, all in there. And the beck continues to run along that little fence line there. And then up to the left, where those willow trees are, and across the top of the orchard. But because that is so full, we walk up here now, walk up the road now, you'll see 
but the other way the water escapes from the orchard is through the gateway where we take the horses in and out. So I'll just show you round to the left here. This is the entrance to our 14 acre field and you can see how the water's puddled. It's not quite so bad here and that ring feeder is where we will start putting the haylage out once the grass is no good. So this is part of the area that we need to get stoned up because the more they start to come down here to feed around the ring feeder it will get boggier and boggier. So moving over to the ent entrance of the orchard you can see it's flowing through like a stream here but quite a pace. This is when I discovered that my boots aren't particularly waterproof. So it's coming through here and across onto our track that goes down to the long field that I showed you earlier. And that part of water over on the right is the beck, which runs up here across the road and to the other side of the orchard. So this is one of the reasons why we don't use the barn field during the winter months because the barn field here that we use in summer to make sure that I don't fall in the bed and we stand on the gate this is the entrance and all the bottom part there it is actually drained. Philip, our neighbour, put all the drains in a couple of years ago. But again, if there's nowhere for the water to go, it's going to sit in the bottom of the field. Now that, that track on the right is actually the beck. And in this corner here, I'll show you a video at some point of when that's dry. This whole banking along this part of the beck is beginning to fall away and crumble away, which is why it makes it very dangerous now to drive the tractor down this track and into the long field to do any work down there. But as I said in the earlier video, give it 48 hours. And because we're on rock rather than clay soil, this is quite likely to all drain away quite quickly once the rain stops coming. So that's really, I know it's not horse related, but I thought for those of you that were interested in some of our land and some of the challenges we have, that you might find it quite interesting. And it will give you a better understanding of some of the things that, that we're dealing with. There's my little tractor who had its service a couple of weeks ago, thanks to James Rawson. It's still very grubby, the tyres are still a bit bald, but it's a little bit safer for me to drive. Yeah. I would show you some horses, but they're up over the banking there, up on the dry ground, because this field, it's the reason we use it for the winter, it does drain incredibly well. So there are puddles in there, but the horses aren't having to stand in them.